Welcome to Business Forward. I'm your host, Matt George. Joining me tonight, Paul Garcia. Paul is the founder and host of the Paul Garcia Show. Welcome, Paul. Hey, Matt. It is an honor and a privilege to be here. This is the coolest studio I've ever seen. It's something I aspire to be on my show, or with my show, I should say. So thanks for having me. It's well, awesome. It's funny because when I asked you to come on, I was thinking to myself, there's not going to be much prep for this because rarely do I have guests that actually talk more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll take that as a compliment. It is a compliment. <laughs> so let's get right down to it here. So let's talk about you. So you're from around here, right? Uh, correct. Well, from Bloomington Normal, so I guess about 40 minutes away from okay. here in Peoria. Yeah, so uh, went to Milliken. Mm -hmm. For one year, and then one I dropped year. out. Dropped out. Yeah. Okay, so... You went there, wanted to study some numbers, but then in your mind, you had that entrepreneurial mindset because what you're doing now, I mean, you are basically an entertainment guru, is what <laughs> I'm going to call you, right? And so you've got this company and you've got your podcast and you've got so many different things. And we're going to go into all of the things that you do, but where you uh, and I kind of hit it off was... I was a guest on your podcast, The Paul mm -hmm. Garcia Show. And what seemed like 20 minutes ended up being roughly about an hour and a half, something, give or take a few minutes. And it was a passionate show because I talked about community, and I, I, which I do on this show all the time. But it's mm -hmm. also um, just a fun, fun time, and you do such a good job. So I want to thank you for coming on the show. But let's talk about what your business is. Um, Gold Infusion's the name of your company. Oh gosh, dude, you know what? I appreciate <laughs> that you did your research. I did my research. Gold Infusion <laughs> was the patent, I guess it was the name for my LLC back in the day. Back in the There's day. There's a but whole you're... different story. That was for smoothies. And name apparently stuck around long enough that people it remember stuck it, right? around. That's so, not my name. It's the Paul Garcia Show. <laughs> let's go into digital marketing real quick. Okay. So when when a business looks and you hear the term digital marketing, what and and let's say I'm starting a business, what what would I come to you for? Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes to digital marketing, people come to me all the time to produce, record. Uh, broadcast and script and do all the stuff to make their business a commercial. Uh, if you, You're talking yeah. about marketing and right. everything. So yeah, I go make people commercials just for fun. I love editing, I love videography, and I love scripting and everything. And then a lot of the times they'll pay me also to air that on my show. But uh, your question was, what was it again? What is well, digital marketing? Or? Digital marketing. So if I was starting a new business and, and I see that you know, you've got a shirt, got a logo on it, mm -hmm. you, you look at the business as a whole. And then if I came to you, you would say, Matt, you need a social media presence or maybe you need to start your podcast or maybe mm -hmm. uh, because you also do some things with developing and designing merchandise, correct? Well, you know, I wish I could say correct. I mean, I, I do. I dabble. Did I in not that. do my homework right? You did. I think you did. You well, dabbled. I think you did. You do that shirt. My dad made this shirt. Well, I got family. it tailored myself. It's in though. the family. Yeah. Let's talk about the podcast <laughs> for a minute. Sure Just thing. show. Why don't you give us a, a rundown of what the show is? Gladly. So on the Paul Garcia Show, what I do is I speak to remarkable people, such as yourself, from the central Illinois, the Illinois, the Midwest area at large, about their incredible lives, their experiences, and their insights. That's what I do on the podcast anyway. And then in addition to that, I was just telling you, I made a video the other day that got a quarter million views in just a couple days, and I'll go out on the street, it's called Paul on the Street, and I'll go gauge the public's opinion on a variety of important issues and, and topics just to get you know, an authentic, true idea of what the public thinks about a given subject. I ask people about the job they think that President Joe Biden has done so far. That one's been really popular. And recently I asked people about their thoughts on legislation surrounding abortion. That's going to be an interesting one once it comes out. But, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I do the on the street stuff. I make commercials on the side and those go on the Paul Garcia show, but on the Paul Garcia show, I speak to remarkable people. That's what I was going to ask you about. So on the commercials, you I mean, this is your show. When they when you they say owner, producer, founder, yeah. this is your vision, <laughs> right? Yeah. So when you came up with the idea of the podcast, did you think I was going to just be all over the board and just hit just interesting people? Or did you originally think to yourself, you know, I was going to go down this one sector. I was going to do this. 
It, I kept it broad. Okay. I kept it broad against the recommendations of people that have done well in business because they say you got to find your niche, you know, and then capitalize on that. Keep it small, keep it focused. My focus was just anyone with a remarkable story from which we can gain insight and wisdom from and inspiration, right? Education, inspiration. That's what I'm trying to do with the Paul Garcia show in those episodes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, my idea from the beginning was speak to anyone about anything that's remarkable, inspiring, and educational. And when you do that, I mean, I've talked to women that have survived murder attempts by their husbands. I've talked to the CEOs of nonprofits like the Children's Home. I've talked to men that have served on the front lines in Vietnam. I've talked to, um, the list goes on. Yeah. You, everything. Anyone that's lived through something or knows about something remarkable, I talk to them. Well, I mean, what's really neat about it is, is you're doing this podcast in a similar way to, to how I'm doing this show, because you're just a lot younger version. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I wish I could say it's something like this show, because this is, like I said, remarkable, but please continue. Well, uh, off. What I was going to say is, you know, when I was asking you at the earlier question about the podcast, you hear that same thing, find a theme, find a theme. But I actually like how you are, I'm not going to say all over the board because it's, there's a strategy to that, mm -hmm. to, to talking to interesting people. Um, but most people that get into this business focus on leadership or, get, or focus, those podcasts, they focus on one, exactly. one thing and you don't. And I think, I think that's an interesting uh, way of looking at it, which actually can broaden whatever your next venture is after that. Precisely, no, and by the way, I didn't realize until we just, you told me a few minutes ago that you're in your 50s. I thought you were just past 30, maybe. Well, I feel like I'm 30. Yeah, right? so you, <laughs> yeah, you said I was like, I'm a younger version of you, and I thought just barely, but anyway, um, no, I think you have to go talk to remarkable people yeah. from a variety of different fields that have lived a variety of different incredible lives. I just talked to an Olympic gold medalist, the most winning wrestling coach in wrestling history, Dan Gable. Oh. He gives me, I mean, he, he inspired me so much. He taught me so much. Then you talk to a woman that survived a murder attempt. You're going to learn so much there. There's so many aspects of living life in, in kinds of wisdom that you can get from, you have to go talk to these right. people if you want to tap into those things. So yes, you keep it broad. And in doing so, I bring in for myself and for my listeners, an incredibly diverse collection of, of valuable insights, I guess. Yeah. Let's talk about Gable for a second. Oh, because gladly. Because he talks about, he talks to CEOs in business all the time. He's got this mindset of not only the winningest coach, he's just a bad dude, man. I mean, he, that dude is cool as can be. He he's knows mine, his yes. stuff. Tell me a story about Gable. Well, here, I'll tell you this. I mean, right before he came on my show, I think the last show he was on was the Joe Rogan Experience, which is the <laughs> biggest podcast on the planet. So he's been on a handful of podcasts. It was Joe Rogan, then the Paul Garcia Show. How about that? That is but awesome. Talk about an honor. I mean, this is an honor, too. This is awesome. But, I mean, Gable, here's one. He told me, uh, I read in his book, that there was this kid that, I mean, he was new to wrestling. He started wrestling in high school. He wasn't even a state champ. I think his name was Brad Smith. He came to the University of Iowa, and he was, you know, by his junior year, he got maybe second in the nation, which is pretty darn good, but it's not first, so Gable doesn't like it. He says, hey, you're starting to fade in the third period. We're going to fix it. So we made this guy, during the whole season, his senior year, run 10 miles, at least that's what it said in the book, run 10 miles each and every week. You know, on Friday evening in the winter in Iowa, he'd make him run 10 miles into Iowa City and he'd follow behind him in his car. But then when I asked Gable about it, he said it was 15 actually, but he only said 10 <laughs> because people would start getting mad if he said it was 15, but you know, everything comes out on the podcast. Right. So he made this guy run 15 miles, more than a half marathon, each and every week, and he said it must have worked because he was a national champion. I think an undefeated national champ his senior year. So stories about pushing people to their limits and then past, which is inspirational, that's Gable in a nutshell. He was the ultimate motivator, the ultimate tough guy, and man, he could make people do incredible things. He could, and, and he did a lot with the mind because, oh, yeah. you know, when, you, when you're a coach like that, and, and that's how they can relate to business because you sit there and go through this mental, I don't know, dump sometimes of so many different things and you're trying to sit here and be a leader and you're, you're, you're worried about strategy and you're worried about revenue and all these different things and it takes a strong mind 
to be able to do that. And so I, th I think these co a lot of these coaches, whether it's Coach K or Gable, or something, they, they write about leadership and talk about leadership all the time. And all the time, if you, if you go back even further, there's just so many Lombardi. And he talks about these, you know, he's known for his great quotes, but it really is, resonates with business in general. Mm -hmm. So it's very cool. So, you know, when, when I, I say, this is the second year of Business Forward, and when I was um, doing this, um, after the first year, I started getting to, uh, you know, kind of, you get into a flow, right? And you get excited about it. And what's excited about it for me is because you, you said conversations with incredible central Illinoisans. Mm -hmm. That's what I do too. And what's cool about it is, and you tell me if this is how you think, I'm learning more from people that I meet on this show than I've learned in, in some education that I've had in the past because you get the real life. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know what? When you sit across from someone one-on-one -on -one like this, and I know there's camera people here and everything, but when you sit across from someone one-on-one, -on -one, especially someone from the area, there's this level of intimacy that you don't quite get in typical education settings. And that said, you don't connect. You don't get the authentic, vulnerable information that you get when you sit across from someone that's lived through something remarkable from your area. For some reason, that's just a, a beautiful environment for authentic, beautiful, deep information to flow. So I get it, man. Yeah. I agree with you one million percent. Yeah. And then it's also an art, getting someone to feel comfortable. You've made me feel comfortable here, you know. You, there was no makeup. You were talking to me. You walked me down here. We were joking about some stuff. So it's an art getting someone to open yeah. up like that, but it's it's definitely the best place to learn, I think. I agree with you, it's an art. But what's interesting about it is, when you start and someone starts opening up about their business or themselves, isn't it amazing how diverse and how uh, interesting people's business mindsets are and how, you know, how it relates and, and that same work ethic, they put it towards their families and they put it towards their Oh, yeah. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, well, you, I mean, look at you. You were, what, 16, 17? You tried playing tennis for five days straight? I mean, that's <laughs> grit. That's Gable. If I would have told Gable that story, he would have loved it. Yeah. But, I mean, yes, there's a certain kind of mindset, this tough mindset, this, this adaptive mindset, flexible mindset, discipline is huge, that it seems runs through all business people. And, you know, then their successful characteristics. Successful business Successful, people. yes, I should say that, yes. Uh, but then, you know, they have certain characteristics like creativity, uh, humor, um, maybe some, some other things that give their business a certain style. But there's definitely some core elements that are shared by all successful business people. I think you have it, and I'm working on getting it. So. Yeah, I, I, it is. It's not only an art, but it is something that you think about almost on a weekly basis. You think about that relationship piece and, and how important it is as a leader. And I think that is something that does resonate with a lot of the good leaders that come on this show and some of them that, uh, there are a lot of them that come on to, to your show. So um, what other stories you have? Because you have some interest. Tell me a story about education because it's such a hot topic right now and it's so important for our young people to, because mm. you, you talk to, superintendents and you talk yeah. to. Do you want me to tell you about one of my guests or something about education that one I've learned? One of your guests. One of my guests. Well, let's see here. <clears throat> Did you, didn't you recently have, uh, because there's some hot topics going on in central Illinois right now. We, we've had some educators on and we talk about, you know, how curriculum has changed mm -hmm. and how a lot of these um, kids, you know, people will say millennials are not, uh, or a certain way or whatever. And I'm sitting here going, wait a minute, my kids are millennials and they're a whole heck of a lot smarter these days uh -huh. than when I was that age. Yeah, okay, here, I'll, I'm, I've got to tell you a little bit about something that I've learned from talking to educators rather than one specific story. Yeah, that's story. fine, that's perfect. Okay, here's something that's really interesting. And first of all, people don't often change their minds. And that's, I think, one of the worst plagues that's threatening humanity here in the United States is this division between people and an unwillingness to listen to other people. What I've found is that the truly remarkable people that are really, I mean, progressing in their lives and doing incredible things are people that love to be proven wrong. That's a beautiful thing that I've learned, that get a thrill out of being hmm. proven wrong. And I've learned that if you can get a thrill, get a real kick out of being proven wrong because, hey, this means that I've lived my entire life up to this point not knowing this thing 
as it actually is, if you can love to be proven wrong, you're going to just, you're going to learn so much and you're going to be a better person yeah. for it. That's yeah. one massive thing that I've learned. So now I'll have conversations with people whom I passionately disagree, but I'll ask some questions, then I'll shut my mouth and listen with open ears and I'll actually try to understand. And on occasion, I've had my mind changed. And that's a humbling thing, but sometimes it's too humbling and too threatening to people that they're like, nah, 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 la, 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 yeah. I'm not listening to you. Right. You're saying things that my parents said I shouldn't listen to, right. I should never believe. If you can invite people, especially intelligent people, to change your mind and then be willing to have your mind changed, I think if more people did that, we would have so much less division in this country. We would get along. There's more friendships being broken right now because of politics and political ideologies yeah. than are being formed. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can just let ourselves, if we can listen to people listen. truly and work to understand, and sky's the limit. And appreciate the other person. Yes, yes. So to the business side of what you do, because I, I find this interesting and I, I think I know, but I don't know if I know. How do you scale a podcast? Is it by advertising dollars or is it by, so if Paul wakes up and says, I want to grow my business, I want to be the next Joe Rogan. Does Joe make his money off of likes? And then the, adver the more likes you have, the more advertisers, the more they pay? Is that how it's done? I mean, that's definitely a large part of it. Okay. So, I mean... It's a work in progress, but I'll tell you what I've learned works so far. So with a podcast, which is, you know, for me, it's a weekly podcast. Sometimes I'll do midweek episodes. Uh, you post an hour-long conversation on YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, etc. You notice that they get more and more downloads, more and more views on average, and it starts going like this. Yes, you get five advertisers on that show, and when you're averaging 3,000 views and downloads combined, they're willing to pay 25 bucks for an ad spot. Uh, once you start averaging 10,000, they're willing to pay $70 for an ad spot, okay. or we'll say 50. You get five advertisers, that's $250 an episode. You start maybe trying to knock out more episodes during the week, um, then 250 times eight, if you can get eight episodes in, um, in a month, that's 2,000. And then maybe you can also start up a website and start doing weekly blogs that thousands of people read. Then you can put little ad spots on there. So then you take that money. I got you. It just goes right yeah. back into the business, you know. Yeah. And uh, well, it, it's interesting because here, public television, there's underwriters. Mm -hmm. For regular television, obviously there's commercial spots and there's sponsors or whatever you want to call it. But podcasts, you see, like there's some podcasts where, at and one one that I listen to, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's it's only 12 minutes. And there's an ad at the beginning and end. There's nothing in between. And I'm like, how do they pay? Like, how do yeah. they make money? And and I've always just thought it was interesting. Because and then all of a sudden, this Joe Rogan comes along, and he's done so many different things, and he gets this podcast, and he the dollars that he's pulling in is ridiculous. I mean, it's huge. So I just find it interesting how to scale this type of entertainment business. Uh, well, yeah, and it it is complicated for sure. I want to say, okay, so you asked how do you scale? A big name of the game is getting continually more interesting, more well-known guests and sharpening your interview skills. I don't think you could pay me to listen to any of my first 20 episodes because my interview skills were just horrid. I mean, I and the cameras were terrible. So you learn how to talk to people yeah. and learn how to shut yeah. up when they're talking. You learn how to ask great questions that will pull out, open-ended questions too, that will bring out the, you know, the best answers and then it's hard work networking. You're the king of networking. I was just saying that at the beginning. But it's hard to get the big names on, even if your show's popular. You got it's it's all You're about who you know. Yeah, you still gotta you still gotta do the work. Mm -hmm. And then another thing I find interesting is, is at the same time, you, I'm gonna say Paul Garcia with your show, you've got to really be thinking about your brand at all times. Because yes. that yeah. brand will expand to larger dollars or a larger platform, whatever your goal is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could say platform, and that is where other things start to happen. So you, you do have a blog. You start becoming an influencer of sorts. Mm -hmm. um, you start getting these advertising dollars coming in. You start doing, um, and there's just so many different avenues, which I find very interesting with this type of business. Mm -hmm. I, I want to tell you, though, 
about the brand just to put it out there, you know, because some people, it's hilarious. You know, I try to have people from the right side of the aisle and the left side of the aisle on a wide variety of topics. You know, I also talk to people that have just done remarkable things, served on the front lines of wars, survived murder attempts, who knows what else, gold medalists, doesn't matter. But my brand, what I want my brand to be is person asks important questions and listens and wants to learn from everyone. Everyone's a master superior to me in some regard from that from them yeah. I want to learn in that that area but I want to be the guy that works to unify that wants to hear people out from both sides of every issue I'm trying to unify and do my small part in the world to unify and to shrink the divide between Americans in all ways shapes and form while also inspiring and educating I just wanted to put that out there well, you know? so there's answer. no question about that's a good my that, brand that's good where do you see your show in three years it's a great question. I see it being, and who knows, maybe if we work together, this will change, but uh, <laughs> I see it in three years being the most honest, balanced media company, at least in the Midwest. Usually I say four years, because three years, if we're being realistic, that's quick. Four years is what I'm thinking. But we'll say three years, I want it to be the most trusted, authentic, uh, non, no narrative having, just pure, honest, authentic journalism. You know, that's what I want to be known as. That pre produces interesting, beautiful, gorgeous audio and video episodes of the Paul Garcia Show, episodes of other podcasts, beautifully written blogs, a great website, just a place that people can really trust that doesn't cater to the biggest sponsors, you know, that's just trustworthy. Yeah. I should work on how to articulate this a little more beautifully, but. <laughs> it's actually good, but at the beginning when I ask about digital marketing, that's really what I was alluding to because you, you, do, you are out there. I mean, your show's out there and that's what I like about it. So you're doing, whether you think you're doing it or not, I think you're doing a good job of it. That's how I ask you to be on the show is not only, you know, reciprocating back what you did to me, but at the same time, I, I follow some of your episodes and I, I get on and I, I check it out. So let me ask you this. How much studying do you do? Maybe it depends on the guest, but how much studying do you do when you're looking at a Coach Gable or somebody like that? You said a book. Did you read the whole book? I do read a lot. I've read both the Gables books. Um, here's the thing, though. You might find this interesting. People might find this interesting. Depending on the guest, of course, depending on the topic at hand, I sometimes will limit my amount of research. I don't prepare questions, by the way. Yeah. That's a big thing. Maybe I'll start with like one idea of a question I'd like to tackle, but I don't prepare questions. I don't like to have questions listed out yeah, in front of me. Yeah, you actually didn't when you interviewed me. Right, because I think naturally the conversation will flow to where it should flow. It'll flow to where you're, if I'm curious about something, I want to ask yeah. you more about the children's home and you know, what's the biggest success story you've ever had? but my notes don't say that, then I'm doing everyone, right. us, our conversation, and the viewers and listeners a disservice because I didn't dive into this thing because I was adhering to the script yeah. too strongly. Um, but as far as research goes, sometimes I just know a heck of a lot about a person or a subject. Wrestling, I, I'm an encyclopedia. Um, so shoot, different economic systems and stuff, I'll probably have to do a little research, yeah. get brushed up on it. Uh, but I don't, research too extensively usually so that I don't risk potentially trying to remember my questions and trying to remember stuff it's just more if I don't know something I'll say hey can you explain this to me because I don't know yeah. and I think people appreciate that so the amount of research I do depends but it's usually not much I, I, I kind of am the same way except I do a lot of studying but I don't get to 90% of what I talk about or what I write down, right? Because it's just all in the back of my head, and usually the guest, as you know, uh, the guest triggers something in your head, and then you go off on a different topic, even because I don't think when I was on your show, we talked homeless youth mm -hmm. for a long time, and because I kept telling stories, and you kept digging them out of me, and digging, 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 and that became what seemed like, um, like, like I said, 10 minutes, it actually uh, went fairly quickly. So your show, Paul Garcia Show. The Paul Garcia the Show. The Paul <laughs> Garcia Show. You can uh, go online, Google it, check it out. You've got to see this show. It is very, very good. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on. You drove over here from Normal, which is not a bad drive, but uh, you came on over. I appreciate it. And uh, 
We'll have you back again sometime. Thanks for coming on. I'm Matt George, and this is another episode of Business Forward.